Afternoon all. Thank you for the introduction. It's a good thing to be going first and getting this out the way. <laughs> for, th for those who don't know me, I am the father of the stunning, beautiful bride, Claire. I am one very proud man stood here today in front of you all. Before I start, Michael, the villa from Portugal have been in touch and said after we left, you left a few items in the room. The army. <laughs> <laughs> Who shared the room with Michael? Peter, you're a rum lad. All jokes aside, I'm very proud to be standing here today speaking about Claire and Michael. It's a very emotional day for me. See my Sorry. Take it easy, son. Take it easy. All jokes aside, I'm very proud to be standing here today speaking about Claire and Michael. It's a very emotional day for me seeing my one and only daughter, my firstborn, getting married. On behalf of Julie and I, I thank you all for making the effort to be here. Trust Claire to pick a venue in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in a non-traditional way, I'd actually like to start by saying a couple of words about the groom my new son-in-law, Michael. There are quite a few stories I could tell, but I will keep it brief. I'll tell you about when Claire and Michael first met. Claire came home one Christmas Eve night after a night out in Ormsgare and told us that she had met this really thick guy. <laughs> he was wearing a three-piece suit. He looked all sophisticated. He was elegant, spoke well, and had manners. He was even a gentleman. He'd given his jacket in a taxi cab. But he worked in a betting shop. <laughs> oh, and by the way, he was staying in a hotel Christmas Eve. Naturally, we had some questions. <laughs> staying in a hotel, that's a bit weird, but... But Claire doesn't suffer fools. She very rarely gets her characters wrong. She spoke so highly about him, so we were naturally intrigued. They went on their first date just after Christmas, and he took her to a restaurant in Liverpool that she'd wanted to go to for years, the Paramaromic. They had a great night and kept in touch for the next few days. In between him, having to go back and forward to Ireland for work, Things seemed to be going well, so we told Claire to invite him round to our house for a party we were having over New Year. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it because he had to drive back to London to feed his hamster. <laughs> this all sounded... A This all sounded a bit weird. Obviously, it was his wife and kids <laughs> that he had to go back to see. So we naturally tried to put it off him. <laughs> Lo and behold, he wasn't married. He doesn't have any kids. And Claire's instincts were true again. Claire and Michael have been together for more than five years. They've had a wonderful life, done some wonderful things and both worked incredibly hard to get where they are today. They both have their own individual strengths and weaknesses, but they massively complement each other. And as a father, that's all I can ask. Just a few words to you, Michael, son-in-law. <laughs> you are one of the most kindest, genuine people I know. I am so proud I'm losing it here. <laughs> to call you my son-in-law. Seeing how happy you make my daughter, what more can a father ask? <laughs> now enough about Michael. I should probably start talking about my daughter. Please be all standing for the first toast of the day.
a toast, a toast to my beautiful daughter and proud wife, Claire. Mrs. Athlete. I know, I know. <laughs> I would just like to say a few words about my daughter, but only one word comes to mind. Perfect. Wow. Now, most of you here today know Claire well, and if you don't, no doubt had the pleasure of Michael telling you how demanding she can be. In a good way, of course, eh, Michael? Claire always knows what she wants in life, she always has. I remember her at the age of five telling me for her 18th birthday her first car was a BMW. She didn't quite get it for her 18th, but it was her first car. When she wants something, she goes out and gets it. And it's safe to say today she has the wedding of her dreams today. It's also fair to say that she has tried her best to take this part of the day, my speech. She has dropped a number of subtle and some not so subtle hints to me about what I should and shouldn't say and what I can and can't say. So you know, Claire, how much I don't want to disappoint you. So here you go. I could stand here all day talking about my beautiful daughter, but you're all hungry. And you need to let these two, Michael and John, say a few words. So, Claire, <laughs> you can decide what I talk about. So when you're ready, press the buzzer. <laughs> Honest. Claire is a Claire is honest as the day is long. She always has been. She is straight to come. She was the only child on our street growing up that would never run away when the rest of them, usually Ali, <laughs> would do something wrong. She obviously despises liars. It's one of her best qualities, but it's a nightmare for anyone around her. The littlest of lies would cause World War III if you weren't careful. Claire and her friend Holly come shopping with us one day. And as we walked down the shop, Julie and I ate a plum. Claire hoped we would ask us if we were paying for this. <laughs> yes, of course we are, love. When we got to the shop, when we got outside, sorry, I told Claire we forgot to pay. She was mortified. She went back in the shop and said to the lady on the counter, that we hadn't paid. And the lady said, what do you want me to do about it now? I can't weigh it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Claire once called it, Claire once branded her own mother a liar because how she explained the words, what sex was. <laughs> as, it, as any good mother would do, Julie deflected her daughter from the rude, word sense, rude sense of the word while she was still young. Julie was somewhat cleverly explained sex was what you were as a person, a male or a female. Technically, not a lie. She knew Claire would not like it if she lied. Then one day, Claire came home from school in floods of tears again. Mum, mum, you've lied to me. Dale Teasdale told me in school, sex was sucking men's willies. You lied to me, Mum. <laughs> Julie literally had to get her birth certificate out to prove what she was. <laughs> she was not lying about the definition of the word sex. Claire believed her eventually. Right, Claire, next one. Mm. Asda. <laughs> Asda. Oh. 
<laughs> successful. <laughs> Claire has been successful, one of the most successful people, if not the most successful person in our entire family. She has the determination like no one I have ever met before. She has always been a winner. Claire was always give her everything she, um, all and everything she did. <clears throat> she would never do anything half-hearted, that said. She could also be gracious in defeat if she did not believe that she deserved to win at something. She would never pull a face or be disrespectful to her opponents, despite her killing her inside. Thankfully, it didn't happen very often. Let's have a drink. <laughs> One thing she loved as much as winning was dancing. Claire, luckily, luckily the two things went hand in hand. Claire obviously loved dancing. She would practice and prepare better than anyone, much like her exams, right through school and university. There would be no sleep the night before. She had to win. And at one point in her life, she was literally in the newspaper every week for seven weeks in a row for one achievement or another. In primary school, her teachers, teachers had to invent another type of star because she had been given too many gold stars. They were close to literally naming it after her, but instead they decided to stick with the platinum. And that's a true story. No, Her teacher continually told us to get saving for Claire right from a young age. And if we didn't know it, sorry, oh, sorry. right from a young age, if she, was going to cost us, she was going to cost us a fortune. And if we didn't know it before, well, we certainly knew it to the day she got her GCSE results. That's the day, day she, she decided she wanted to be a doctor. Seven grade A stars and four grade A's. An unbelievable achievement and as she will happily tell you the proudest day of her life to date until now Claire never actually decided she wanted to be a doctor until after the GCSEs she always wanted to be a PE teacher Claire always Claire always looked up to PE and dance teachers and I think probably that's why she wanted to be one I could never see her being being a hairdresser or going on to get herself a trade like mum or dad. Snob. Right. <laughs> she wasn't your typical student. She didn't embellish on crazy lifestyles. Most students do. Spending every penny on nights out and booze. She instead used her entire student loan to open an ISA. She was offered a place in Univ Oxford University and invited her to go along to, for the open day to see the campus. She did not like it one bit. The fact they, they found students who walked on the grass was enough to put her off. I am so proud of my baby girl and everything she has achieved in her life. From start to finish, she has never stopped amazing me and continuously to do so. Even her latest exam, her final GP exam, she finished top of the entire country. She received the best. I'm glad you got my brains. She received the best marks out of every single person nationwide who took the exam. I would say I was surprised, but we aren't. She never stops amazing us. I could literally stand here all day talking about you, but I won't. I'll give you one more go, Claire. No. Happy. Happy. <laughs> Has it worked? No. There you go. That's why I said happy. <laughs> it was smashing money. <laughs> My beautiful little girl has always been happy, determined, fiercely determined, but happy. 
All she wanted was people around her to be happy. Claire has always been lucky enough to be surrounded by good family and friends, everyone from her aunties, uncles, cousins, her school friends, her dance friends in university and work friends, and now Michael's family and friends. I must give a special mention to her bridesmaids who are supporting her today. They have been some of the most supportive and best friends a girl could wish for. <laughs> Joe, who Claire met whilst waiting in a queue, first day of uni. Safe to say, these two hit it off immediately. Sarah, who Claire met through Michael, but has been one of her closest friends, her brunette lady. <laughs> Hayley, her oldest school friend, the one who buys a best friend necklace for, but she's too scared to wear it because she has another best friend at the time. <laughs> I still remember you two writing little letters to each other when you were tiny. And a and of course, the maid of honour, Katie, who Claire met. Who Claire met, as you do, dressed up in pyjamas while on one of her few nights out at uni, with over 1,500 medics in the centre of Manchester, thick as thieves ever since. I thank you all for looking after my little girl her entire life. You are, you are all a definition of what a friend should be, and we are truly grateful Claire and Michael have you in their lives. I finish now. Can you please all stand and raise your glasses for one final toast? From me, it's quite simple, really, Michael. To keep a marriage happy, top up the common cup. When you're wrong, admit it. And when you're right, shut up. <laughs> To the bride and groom, thank you. Um, so, um, finally, uh, husband and wife. I don't think that will ever get boring saying it, so apologies now. Um, thanks everyone for being here today. Actually, can't believe that today the day that I become a married man has finally arrived. Um, but before I start, toasts are gonna happen a lot, by the way. Um, before I start, can I just ask you all to stand, please, grab your glass and cheer as loud as you can while I say for the first time publicly, I love you, Mrs. Applick. <laughs> you sit, sorry, sit down then. thank you. <laughs> so before I start, um, just a couple of quick mentions in the room. Um, Adam and Zoe and Dean and Alex both celebrating your respective wedding anniversaries around this time, so congratulations, guys. And then um, just, just one other mention in the room um, to a man who selflessly allowed us to steal his limelight this weekend, um, performed exceptionally in the church, my uncle Peter Gilly, who is 60, doesn't look a day over 40. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. So um, I, I wrote my speech, um, and it was, it was over 18,000 words long, and my good friend Michael Kennedy, who I practiced with, told me it was categorically the worst groom speech he's ever heard in his life. <laughs> um, so you'd be glad to know I've cut it down a little bit. Um, I'm just going to start with a few thank yous. Um, Amanda and Neville, who uh, own this venue, they've just been nothing short of fantastic with us and looked after us from start to finish. So say a big thank you to them. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely be back on our anniversary, uh, and Deacon loves it here, and hopefully in nine months we'll be celebrating the, the baby we're gonna conceive in that hot tub over there, little Zuzi. Oh, 10 months. Um, Jed and the team from Hog and Apple, um, who've made a very, very, potentially very difficult decision, really easy with the food. Uh, I know you haven't eaten yet, but I can tell you it's fantastic, but the truth is that we were sold by his, by his office and his brand. As soon as we walked in, didn't matter what the food tasted like, he, he's brilliant at what he does, and we thank you very much. Um, John and Sarah and everyone at Wild Thing, uh, they've helped us with all the little finer touches today. Uh, it wouldn't, the day wouldn't be what it is without you, and thanks for helping us make it really memorable, and a special thank you for Stacey as well. She's been tremendous. 
fantastic. Quick thank you to Something Borrow, the guys in the room who've helped us as well, and obviously uh, to Bayer and Laura, our photographer, and Tom, our videographer, who are doing us amazingly proud, and hopefully he'll get us some amazing pictures, make, us, make me look good. Um, <laughs> my uh, groomsmen, um, you guys, you guys have been there for me through, through thick and thin, um, and it helps massively that you're both Evertonians. But that wasn't the reason that you were chosen. Um, I haven't known you as what's traditionally long for a groom to know their groomsmen, um, but I definitely class you as two of my closest friends, and thank you for everything you've done. Um, what? Oh, yeah. One of the things that's impressed me most about today is how good our brothers look. Um, you've scrubbed up well. Thanks very much for coming on both stags and being there for me and being there for us. Um, Joseph, where are you? You should wear the suit more often, mate. It's not just for court, it looks good all the time. Uh, next, on to my best man, John. Um, you've been one of my closest friends ever since the day that you used to bully me for wearing a pink jumper and suit jacket before it was a cool thing to do. Uh, the highlights in the earring, I'll let you off, they were probably fair cop, you could get me for them. But you arranged one in a million stag, it was, the villa was top class and the sixth hole on the golf course was probably one of the best I've ever played. Uh, you somehow managed to pull together a group of the best gang of lads I could have wished for. Um, the too many, there are too many moments for, for us to talk about and I've thanked you a million times, but on behalf of everyone who was there, thank you very much. A huge thank, thank you goes to our bridesmaids, um, the four of you look absolutely stunning, thank you very much for today. Um, thanks for all the support you've given Claire over the last few months, I know how much effort that you've all put in making trips to Leeds for dress fittings etc, um, and I know how much you made her hen amazing for her, her very expensive hen <laughs> you've made amazing for her. Um, yeah, 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 so I've heard. The hen anniversary can happen, by the way, that's allowed. Yeah, stag anniversary, John. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Claire's demanding, I know only too well, but you guys made her feel um, special every single second of this journey, and we're both entirely grateful. Thank you. A, a special thank you goes to Katie, our maid of honour. Um, you've been nothing short of perfect throughout our entire wedding. Uh, your attention to detail is an inspiration. You are a best friend to the bride and also an amazing friend to myself. You're a genuine girl with a heart of gold and we're truly honoured to have you such an important part of our day. You did us proud today in church. Uh, you definitely nearly got the tears going. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, next on to my in-laws, Jed and Julie, um, or Mar and Dar in law as they are affectionately known. Or my personal preference, Nanny Julie and Granddad Jed to Baby Zeus when he arrives, nine months. Uh, I've been referring to Jed and Julie as my in-laws for years. It's not a name that applies now that Claire and I are married. Ever since the first day I walked into their home, an evening I'll never forget because of how special they made me feel from the very first second. I know I've always been welcome in their family. Thank you both for allowing me to marry your daughter and for your kind generosity in making our big day possible. You've done so much to make it special for the both of us and today simply would not be happening without you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you to Claire's grand, Mavis. Uh, absolutely both delighted that you're here. You're a special part of our lives and you're welcome to visit us in Leeds anytime. Please don't be a stranger. No invitation required. There will always be a pile of shirts ready and waiting for you to iron. <laughs> you're so good at it. <laughs> A really special thank you goes to the best dressed man in the room, my granddad. <laughs> granddad, you've, you've been an inspiration to me my entire life. You don't say much when you do, people listen. You're a true gentleman and every single thing that I've learned from you over the years has helped me to be, play the massive part in me being the man I am today. I'm far from perfect, but I like to think that I am a good man who has respect and dignity, two traits I greatly admire in you. Thank you for being on the top table with us today. Thank you.
Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, I'll do that. I'm going to do that. Don't worry. But one of the biggest thank yous goes to all of you guys, uh, every single person who's here to, with us today. In a build-up to a wedding, it's easy to get lost in the planning and arranging of everything that you have to do. Um, when we looked at our final guest list, we are both immensely touched. It's incredible that all of you are here in North Yorkshire just for us. Jed joked earlier, but it's true. Claire did choose a venue in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but you've still made a massive effort to be here for us. We know people have spent a lot of money on traveling and arranging accommodation, and we could not be any more grateful. We'd especially like to thank um, our friends and family who've traveled from the USA, Peter and Kathy. <laughs> Come from New York. Justin and Megan are here from Philadelphia. Don't mention the Super Bowl. Tom Brady fan over there, don't mention it. Um, and Mike and Sheridan, who are here from New Jersey. Thank you very much. We've got Ev, a friend of ours, who's come, is here joining us from Australia. And, and Brian, Lauren, Paddy and Ruth, who've popped across the pond from Ireland as well. Thank you very much for making the effort. We've also got a great gang from London, Margate, Cambridge Ways, uh, a few from Manchester, two separate gangs from Middlesbrough. We've got the Yorkshire Massive in the room. And uh, of course, uh, everyone who's made a massive effort to come from Liverpool as well, yeah. and Ormsky. And... Yeah. There are plenty of others in the room, um, and plenty of other people who have played a big part in our day, and we'll be sure to thank each and every one of you personally. We couldn't have done this without you. Without you. There are, of course, um, all those who can't be here today, and not through choice. Uh, my mother, I know, would have been immensely proud woman if she was here with us today. Mostly, no doubt, because I've married a doctor. <laughs> she would have loved... She would have loved everything about you, especially scoring top in the entire country in your recent GP exam. And she would have showed off exactly like your own, mother, your own mother did. You and my mum are very different people, Claire, but I can honestly tell you that she would have adored you. Everything about you. It scares me how much you actually got on. She liked the finer things in life, was immensely house proud and a tad pretentious. She had good taste in most, most things, but unlike her, you've got good taste in men. Lucky for me. <laughs> um, another person who would have been immensely proud here today uh, would have been my nan. Most of you know, uh, she recently passed away. She would have been sat right up here on the top table next to us. Today is the day that she dreamed about for many years. She always wanted to know that I was happy and safe. That was her one wish as far as I was concerned. She did, she did everything for me, and together with my granddad, I will be eternally grateful. I know she would have been so proud to watch me marry such a wonderful lady as Claire. She knew from the moment she met Claire that she was right for me. She had an uncanny sense of character that was very rarely wrong. She will always be a special part of our lives. Our children and their children will all be told about the legend that is Queenie. <laughs> there are, of course, other family members and friends who can't be here today, um, potentially too many to mention individually. So I'm here, please ask you all to raise your glass to absent family and friends. That's it. To absent family and friends. The biggest thank you of the day <clears throat> goes to the star of the show, my very own wife, Mrs. Claire Affleck. As those of you who've been in our position know, weddings don't just happen. And I would like to thank my wife, I won't get old saying that, <laughs> for being the perfect bride in waiting throughout this entire time. She has driven the ship, controlled the budget, luckily, <laughs> and done an incredible amount of legwork. She's ensured we've made the right decisions as opposed to the quick decisions. And despite my occasional annoyance at her desire to research the hell out of every single detail to check we couldn't get it cheaper, <laughs> she's been nothing short of perfect. Thank you, Mrs. Affleck, for making today the day of our dreams.
Claire and I have made some amazing memories in the five years we've known each other. My infamous chat-up line, nice hands. <laughs> true story, genuine true story. Will never be forgotten and will no doubt never be copied. Our first date was an evening spent talking about Claire's ex for the entire duration of the meal. <laughs> followed by a list of other dates that she had lined up for that week. <laughs> With me living in London in the early days and Claire being in Liverpool, we coined the phrase teammates to explain our relationship. This meant that we were exclusive with one another, but it wasn't quite serious enough for Claire to update her Facebook status to in a relationship. <laughs> our engagement was, the was one of the best weekends of our lives. An evening with Deacon Blue, at Ancient Racecourse and the Everton match the following day, all surrounded by some of our closest friends and family. My actual proposal didn't go according to plan, but the way it eventually happened, just the two of us together, me speaking from the heart, and that one single moment in time that no one can ever take away from us, the entire thing was perfect. Throughout all of those amazing times, there have been some testing times. In every relationship, there are ups and downs, and ours is no different. But I can honestly say that I would not change one second of my life so far together with Claire. Everything we have experienced has made us who we are today, both individually and collectively. With my teammates stood next to me, there's nothing in life we cannot handle together. I love you, Claire Affleck, and that simple fact will never change. <laughs> so, I uh, touched a little on our past, um, but it's always funny that when Claire and I talk about the past to friends and family, we always have slightly contrasting memories about how it all panned out. Um, so I know it's not necessarily traditional, um, but since a couple of you have already asked me um, before if you could say a few words, then I thought, why not? Especially as what you're going to say is completely independent and your own recollection of exactly how Claire and I met. But I think Michael Kennedy wants to say a few words. Pretty sure he does. Don't you, Michael? I too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go, mate. Stand up, Mike. Stand up. Just read from the heart, Michael. Do I say Michael Kennedy? No, no, you can cut that off. Sorry. <laughs> Wish I drank more. Um, I've known both Michael and Claire separately for years. Michael was always the good looking one in our group. Sure. <laughs> 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 It is true, it is true. Uh, when he wasn't pulling all the ladies, uh, he was busy ironing his super stylish shirt and v-neck jumper combo. I'm surprised you're not wearing it today, to be honest. Uh, Claire was all over Michael the first night they met in Allscape. Now that is true. I saw that. It was ridiculous. Honestly, it was terrible. Paul, uh, he was just minding his own business and she did all the legwork. Desperately trying to get his attention. Uh, they truly are an amazing couple, and uh, we are all very happy. They snogged, <laughs> definitely my words, snogged. <laughs> <laughs> they snogged at the bar that evening. Best wishes for the rest of your lives together. Congratulations to you both. So kind, man. That's so kind. So true as well. Um, I know one of Claire's friends, Zoe, is never, um, never afraid to get on the mic at a wedding. I know she's got a few words to say as well. <laughs> Uh, Claire introduced the girls to Michael back in 2015, when he wasn't being just generally good looking and uber fashionable. <laughs> he was always telling us how much he wanted to marry Claire. Very true. true. <laughs> and that he would treat her like a princess for the rest of her life. He did also say that one day he might even love her as much as he loved his beloved Everton football club. <laughs> None of us believed it. But five years on, I now know how much of a perfect couple they are. Best wishes for the rest of your lives together. Congratulations. Thank you, Joe. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Um, Joe, I think, I think you wanted to say something as well, didn't you? Joe, my good friend, my good Liverpool fan friend. Fan with the Amazonian kids, you know? Nice. First, can I tell you that I wrote these words myself? <laughs> with no help or assistance from anyone, especially not Michael. Michael first mentioned Claire to me when we were playing five-a-side football one evening. <laughs> when he wasn't scoring all the goals, 
We spent the rest of the game talking about how we had met the girl of his dreams and what a wonderful personality she had. Being the perfect gentleman he was, he never once mentioned how much he loved her cute little bum or how amazing she was in bed. Never was. There's a line about it. Best wishes for the rest of <laughs> Come on, read your words, your words. I wish I supported Everton, so I could be more like him. <laughs> Best wishes for the rest of your lives together. Congratulations to you both. Three times, three times. And um, I think it's one time for one more. Um, Sarah, please, please, cousin, someone from the family. Stitching me up here. No, 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 not at all. Oh dear, I'm sorry. <laughs> Claire first told us about this man known only as Casanova. <laughs> On the night that Niall and I got married, she came along with her friend Katie and just talked all night about the man of her dreams. <laughs> she said he was tall, dark, handsome, and smelt just divine. <laughs> She said she was head over heels in love from that moment and it was clear to see that she was fully intended on making him her husband one day. From the moment we met him, we knew immediately that everything Claire had said was 100% true. <laughs> do you want to do this? <laughs> Best wishes for the rest of your lives together. Congratulations. <laughs> Claire, it's funny that's exactly how I remember things as well. It's good that other people do too. Um, so, all jokes aside, um, although all of that was true, uh, Claire, I promise you that we're going to have fun every single moment to wrestle our lives together. You are now, and have always been since the day we became official, my best friend. When I proposed to you, I promised that I'd put a smile on your face every day, and I will. What I love is that I see another side to you that most people don't. I love everything about you. From when we wake up in the morning, our little routine with Deacon, to, to every little care and thing you do to me each and every day. What I really love is that you make me better as a person and you make me fulfill my potential. Before all of this, I was selfish, stubborn, moody and impatient. And now I'm more positive, family focused and humble for everything that I have. And it's all down to you. Claire, you have changed me for the better, and after years of procrastinating, the man you always wanted to be in your life, I have finally become. I will be your perfect husband, the perfect father to our children, and give you everything you are meant to have and deserve. It's not lost on me what a privilege it is to marry a woman as amazing as you, and I will never let you or our families down. Claire Affleck, I could not be in love anymore. You are truly stunning, the most beautiful princess I have ever seen. You are flawless and will remain so in my eyes forever. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you for one time, final time from me to please raise your glass and toast the new and the beautiful Mrs. Affleck.
on the invite. My do you not want me there, mate? Come on. Hope you're well, guys. Have the most fantastic time. I know you're a big fan of leaving the own player. You have to come down and watch one of the shows when we do it. Lots of love. Have the best time ever. And I'll see you guys soon. Good luck, mate. Have a great time. Have a great time. Good luck, mate. I'm a good guy. If I do, something's gone wrong. Um, standing here with the microphone in front of his hands, in front of all these people. I suppose he couldn't look any more like Donny Osmond if he tried. <laughs> but just on that speech, Kenno, what happened? How much did he change? All of it. All of it. 18,000 words long. 18,000 words long. After half an hour, stop, mate. This is shit. <laughs> it's too long. Too many pointless stories, no need for half of it. Bin it and start again with just some of his words. And he still went on that long. <laughs> I'm sure we've all got a story about these two who've stayed together. Unfortunately, Michael reminds me the other day of mine. And it was when he was living in Liverpool City Centre. For some strange reason, I've been given a spare key which came in handy at four o'clock in the morning when Claire rung me and she was pissed and she couldn't wake him up and she couldn't get in. So being the superstar I was, I drove down to his apartment. Claire now being the superstar had decided she didn't want to go in. She wanted to go back to her mum's instead. <laughs> her mum lived in Skem at the time. What's Skem, wasn't it? <laughs> Orton, sorry, she lived in Orton. Orton, lived in Orton at the time. Basically, if you don't know, it was miles away from town. So Mick had been on a night out and he was dead to the world. I, pers I persuaded Claire, I'd check on him, I'd wake him up, I'd sort things out between the two of them and if I couldn't, then I'd drive her home. So she agreed. 
As I walked into the living room, there he was, fast asleep, on the couch, with the telly on. At first I thought he was watching the 2005 Champions League final once again. <laughs> Thankfully he wasn't and he was just watching a porno. <laughs> and now I had two options, water or a pillow. So we got the biggest pillow I could find and smashed them right across the head. So hard, he flew off the couch and he absolutely shit himself. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> Not having a clue what I was doing there, I started to explain what had happened. To which he weirdly then lifted up the Sky TV remote control and said, I'm going to ring Claire right now. <laughs> Not on that he wasn't. <laughs> Thankfully, I managed to persuade him to stay and we sorted things out. But I did know it was my time to go when we were both talking and Michael decided he needed to go for a pee. But as he went into the toilet, for those that don't know, Michael lives in like an open plan apartment. And he went in and he flushed the toilet just as he let out the biggest fart you've ever heard. <laughs> I'm not messing. It was my time to go and I left him to it. <laughs> I'm quickly going to just do a little video now just to show you something different. Um, I know, yeah, I am cheating, but it gets me out of it. But I will come back to another speech, so I'll just leave it with me. Uh, it gives you a bit more of an idea of the Michael Affleck I know and grew up with. So if you can watch it, Claire, if you want to come out as well. Where are you going to watch it from here? Yeah, yeah. Good, stand there then. I think like this. <laughs> you see it's done. Yeah. That's actually his arm.
Idea why he ended on that song, it just seems appropriate. He didn't come out, we both got married, so we're good. Now, just before this finish, the moment that I'm sure you've all been waiting for, and it's the stag do. Enough says about that, the better. <laughs> now, it wasn't as bad as you may think. I also like Jed, but as he, there he is. I've got some items that the Villa Company have been in touch with me and they've sent back. So if they belong to a few of you, just there, let me know, give me a shout if they belong to you. Uh, I've got some personalised golf balls that Peter Gallagher had made. So thanks very much for them, Peter. Um, apparently they were all found in the ravine on the sixth hole, which every single one, every single person went in. Um, I've got caps and towels that uh, John Howard had made. Thanks to John for them. Michael was adamant that it had to be small letters on the sky bet uh, because Sean messed it up apparently on the van. I've got a wet Nokia phone. Smells of kebabs. <laughs> Shittest phone in the world, but belongs to Roscoe. I've got a wobbly pencil. Don't worry, Rachel, none of the band four dancers came out. <laughs> uh, I've, now, I've now got two items I can't put names to. Got a fire extinguisher. <laughs> just, just on the fire extinguisher. Um, Claire has told me that no matter what happens, no fire extinguisher can be set off today. So if there is a fire, just run. <laughs> Don't set them off. Just run. For all fire and safety procedures, please speak to Sean. Uh, and also, just before I finish. What happens in the Algarve stays in the Algarve. Uh, it was something that I put on the bottom of the memo. So if the boxing gloves belong to anyone. <laughs> Claire's, that, that, that's me done by the way, I've, I've had enough now, I'm going. Claire as tiny. Claire's kindly gone and got uh, Michael a video, which she wants to share with everyone. This has got absolutely fuck all to do with me, by the way. <laughs> Sorry for swearing, I know there is kids, I just want to categorically, this has got nothing to do with me. Hello everybody, and welcome to this week's Everton Show. And I'm Everton, I'm joined with your assembly is found by David Unsworth, who's just completed a successful season of 23. Before we review the season, Dave, the big match this week is the wedding with Michael and Claire, which baffles me. Well, that's the only comparison I can make is that the Champions League team playing a League Two team. It's, uh, it's a total over achievement and um, quite astonishing, really. Um, you can't believe it. You've met him before, haven't you? I believe so. I believe he's been to my house and uh, apparently we had my aftershave one night, so um, I believe there's a story behind that, but um, I'm taking all the credit anyway. But like, like you said, Total over achievement, Dan. Total over achievement. He's a lucky, lucky man. The 
Who's the story behind the aftershave? Claire, tell us about the aftershave. I think it's worth more, it's Andrew's life, it's holding. He is, he's just here, and then I, I met him, I think it was the man who was in your house, so yeah, the kids still go. So I'm like, well, that's just a problem. Wow, I'm not talking about this, but you're going to pass on that. It's a good thing to be there, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be there. Yesterday, we uh, had a fantastic day, a great night, and uh, all the very best for the future. I'm going to be very best to you as well.